Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Iria, and today I'm going to tell you a story and try to explain how testers can help with doing product design and requirements review. Actually, I will answer a simple question. What testers do when there is no product yet? Okay, so first, let me tell you a little bit why maybe would you like to listen to this talk after all? Well, in reality, requirements and uh, requirement documents and specifications basically can be misunderstood, even when they are very well written. And there is a slight chance that somebody will actually totally misunderstood you. And another reason why including testing and critical thinking into doing a product design reviews and requirements before the product is, is developed is actually a simple reason. I believe that we are all here because we want to improve ourselves. We want to deliver a better work. We want to deliver better designs. I'm sure that every one of you Every one designer here in this room wants to deliver a beautiful design, and I'm sure that every developer and, uh, will, would like to do that as well. And UX researchers tend to deliver intuitive and perfect seamless flows, just as product owners really like to make their re requirements clear and understood and done yesterday. I'm sure that actually developers would approve those kind of documents as well. A second logical question you might ask yourselves is, why shouldn't I do my own review? Why, I, why am I not the best person to see what's wrong in this design? I made it, I created it. Well, the reason besides uh, besides uh, the obvious thing is following. But let me share you a little bit of my experience first, and then I will explain you why. You sh probably you shouldn't be the only one, only person that sees your documents, your deliverables. Hi, as I said, I'm Miria, and I'm a software tester, obviously. Maybe what's not so obvious about me is that during these 10 years in the field, I also worked a couple of years as a business analyst. So I wrote a bunch of bad and good requirements documents. I was also for three years a product owner, so I had a chance to collaborate on and redesign uh, two products. So I have a good grip about it. And nowadays, I've been dog fooding a lot. What I wanted to say is, let me first explain you what dog fooding is. Eating your own dog food, aka dog fooding, is a term used to explain when a company use, use their own products. It's something like um, beta testing. It was actually introduced, uh, popularized in the 80s by Microsoft when one of their managers invited the other managers on the stakeholders meeting to, to test, to use their own products. And another reason, oh, and while dog fooding, aka testing this product, I actually created three years ago, I was really convinced that this product was perfect when I was a product owner. I saw no, no problem with it. And now, it gets me confused sometimes. I would even say sometimes it gets not great, not terrible. But is it me? Do I have some kind of problem with myself because now I see the problems and before I saw no problems? So what's different? What's different uh, except the obvious difference in the roles I'm in and right now as a software tester and back then. So the difference is within the mindset. 
Because when I was a product owner, I had this mindset of which problems to solve. I was all about prioritizing features and keep cleaning, keep my backlog clean. Well, it wasn't clean all the time, but I really strive to do that. And just as designers and developers are mostly into the how part, I'm sure that all the time you are thinking uh, when you're a developer or, or designer is how to solve a particular problem. But we, testers, actually we are more into risk analysis. We are all the time seeing problems and problems all the time. So basically we, we are constantly asking ourselves how can this product fail? And this is the main reason I'm here today to talk about what is a product design and requirements review? And I will try to give you a little bit more reasons why you should think of including testing and critical thinking into the process to review your own work. I will share a few, two examples of mine, my, let's say, not the best work I did as a product owner, to show you uh, in a simple way what can we learn from it. So, because I really believe that testing should begin even before we write even a single line of code, because uh, we can help in this part as well. And I'm sure that you are not so much convinced right now, just as this grumpy cat asks, but why? So let me give you a few more reasons for that. So, I'm sure everybody here in this room, as I said before, wants to improve. That's why we are here on the conference. Second reason is nobody likes doing things over and over again. Remember those situations when requirements were not so well written or they were totally uh, misunderstood and you had to rewrite everything again because it was wrong from its beginning, because nobody actually put a critical thinking on it. And I'm sure that nobody, besides maybe crazy persons like us testers, likes bugs. But not even testers like them on production. So, let me show you examples. I picked two examples. Those are pretty simple, you will see. And those are my own, so I'm not shaming anybody here except for myself. But I will show you what I've learned from it. And later we will see one way of how I, I am doing a product design and requirements review. So first example, dog food I brought today. I like to call, dude, where is my data? The context was following. We redesigned the product from scratch, and we wanted to deliver it to the market in some reasonable amount of time. So, of course, we just ditched a few features from the scope, and we haven't designed them, so we had no idea how will they look like once they happen. And it hit me months later, because clients were asking, hey, we want to be able to export our customers' data. So, I had an idea. And of course, this idea was awesome. As you can see, awesome idea. We will put this export here on the main screen. It's a mock-up of the main, main uh, summary page. But there was only one problem with it. The problem is that clients couldn't find it because it was hidden under this ellipsis, so this was, was probably a mistake number one. And once they found it, uh, promises happen. We promised them, hey, we will prepare your data and notify you. Why is this a problem? Instead of taking actions immediately, because if clients want to export the data, why not start the process? Uh, immediately. And after a while, because exports sometimes took time, because uh, in this product there were millions of records of our clients' customers' data. So 
we had to prepare all of those records and prepare Excel files and export it. It took time. It was time consuming. So what happened? We notified them again with a pop-up message. What a great idea, number two. Mistake was, another mistake, was <laughs> clients needed to click download. And sometimes they were just, they went away from the application, so they went out of focus, and this pop-up just came out of nowhere. And why not download this automatically? We totally missed a few crucial things. We totally didn't um, let our clients know what's going on with their data, with the export. So what happened in reality is that some clients actually asked our support, where is my data? We clicked and nothing happened, which is a really bad thing. So what I should have asked myself, because I didn't, I totally missed to do a proper review, to ask another pe person, to ask testers or designers or anybody else that will criticize my own work. What I should have asked, okay, are there any unnecessary steps? Why not start automatic download? Why making our clients to click like four times to get the data? And the second question was maybe, okay, is the product giving this feedback? Is this feedback constant? Are our clients aware of what's going on all the time? Is there any kind of progress bar? Because if something takes time, we should probably be pretty clear and transparent about what's going on to our clients. And the third question, which is a really good question to ask all the time when you're reviewing any kind of user experience, is, is the experience broken in any way? Is it continuous? Or clients will get surprised. At least I should ask those questions. So my lessons learned were a couple of things. Sometimes when it's expected that feedback will take a while or some action will take some time, like data export in this case, and users can get confused or lost. So you're risking here that they will call your call centers or support. Please don't leave them hanging. Be transparent about the process. This is what I learned. I learned that we need to communicate all the time in somehow. And we shouldn't ever, ever break that experience and surprise them with these pop-up messages. I don't think that is a good idea. And I'm not a UX designer, to be clear and completely honest. I'm just having a critical thinking about things right now, because I learned. Second example is more about business requirements that actually wasn't so understandable. But let's see what it is. I will give you a little bit of context here first. Do you know Google Contacts, right? Probably you use it in somehow. And they have this pretty great feature. And they try to be smart and ask you, hey, do you want to uh, merge your duplicated contacts? And one time, I said yes. You know what happened? All of my data in my contact address book just got messed up. So uh, one time, I sent birthday messages totally to the wrong person. But hey, at least I, I remembered about their birthday. It doesn't matter. It was totally six months before. So I figured, because our product was kind of, let's call it Google Contacts, but on steroids. And I figured, oh, we need to help our, our clients in this merging duplicated data. We need to resolve it somehow. I'm sure my clients will be happy with the idea. So again, I had an awesome idea. But this, this looks pretty simple. It's you totally get what's going on here, right? But we will see that it's not, because this re business requirement was not even clear to me, and I created it. And um, 
first red flag for me should have been uh, the situation when I was trying to explain to developers, <laughs> and they're a bunch of smart people, that how this logic of merging duplicated data will work. And they were like, come on, can you just write a document or just draw it on the, on the whiteboard? And I was like, mm, I should have listened to this red flag. But let's see what kind of problems we see on this simple form. First, I totally missed to check if wording is OK. You shouldn't say invalid people in your software, because that's not a pretty good thing to do, right? So problem number one. Problem number two was, huh, we introduced a term called duplicates, but we haven't explained. It was a new term in our application. And we had no definition for this duplicate. So clients couldn't know what is a duplicate in our case. Is it a duplicated name, duplicated number, or email address? And I still haven't figured what is duplicate in Google contacts, to be honest. I still don't know that, nor here, but OK. And the third thing, it's not the only problem here, but the third problem I wanted to talk about today is resolve. So what does it do? Have we explained this anyway? Resolve automatically or what? Resolve how? What will happen with my data? I would ask myself as a client. What I should have asked instead is, hey, is this feature easy to understand? Or do we need to put some kind of additional content, content here to explain what will happen? Second problem was, is it easy to make a mistake? It's too easy to make a mistake because there is only one button that it's not even in a, I think it's not even in a CTA color. And when you click on, on this button, you don't know what will happen. And when we talk about customer, client's customer's data, this is really sensitive information because it's, it's their customers and we shouldn't mess it up. And if we allow to mess it up, because we have to know that, and we all know that it's always our mistake. It's never the customer's mistake, of course. And what I also failed to do is to figure out how can we enable our clients to recover from this. Because it's, it can be really a problem when all of your contacts, like 30 million of your customers' data, gets merged somehow, you know, kind of. One time, what happened, please don't tell anybody, one client had a mista in, uh, uh, mistake in their data, but what happened, they merged like million of millions of contacts into one person. It was, ooh, it was one person with millions of emails. Of course, we were so wrong because it was our fault we allowed it. So developers had to spend like three days to work things out, which was not something I really wanted them to do like then because I was a product owner. I wanted them to do some new features, right? And I wanted them to be done yesterday, uh, as always. And lessons learned from this simple, at least seemingly simple, Example was, well, if feature is not easy to understand, first thing is, OK, rethink if you should actually do it in the first place. And if you decide to do it, please think about the impact on the customer's data. Data integrity is really important. And if it does, think of a way to allow them to recover from this. Please don't make a mistake as I did. OK. This is the main reason why now, today, I'm a software tester. And I like to do a product reviews. So let's see what it, what, what it is and how do I do it right now. 
product review is, I like to put it these words, is basically asking questions about design and requirements with the goal of not asking them later after production when it's really, really expensive to ask those questions, and especially if clients ask you those questions. Because I strongly believe that testing, testing in the terms of doing product reviews is basically uncovering risks when everybody else, designers, developers, product owners, see no problem. And this is the main reason I do it right now. So let me show you a couple of things I like to do when reviewing basically other people's work and helping them. We can look at it from two angles, doing requirements, design, uh, requirements and design reviews. I like to look, when I look at the requirements, I like to look them, look them from different angles. First angle is, okay, all, are all business rules well known? Are all flows defined? If they are, are defined in the document, can I understand them in some other way? Are they clearly written? Is it understandable what, what should be done? Third one is my favorite, and this is the question when most of people fail. Show me the data. Is this business decision data-driven or not? What are the use cases and clients that you are going to sell this feature or product to? This is a really important thing to ask. And one secret I will tell you, you can use it maybe to advocate with product owner not to do this feature if nobody will use it. It's also a good thing to do as a tester. Of course, there is a consistency. Is this feature or business rule or behavior consistent with other business rules we already introduced in our product. And of course, the risks. How is this requirement feature impacting other things on the platform and other features? We should tell teams about those impacts. This is the value we provide. So you could ask a couple of questions to get your juices going and to get to thinking. These are not the only questions. These are just conversation starters. Are there any complicating th things? Are there any unused features? Hence, show me the data thing. Are there unnecessary features? Maybe missing features? Hence, this undo, missing undo action I totally failed to do. Is this foggy in some way? Do we understand what's going on? And are there any risks? Because remember, there is always a risk. Always. At least, I like to think so. Second thing is, really important as well is reviewing designs and user experience. And you can look at it also from a different aspects. And first one is my favorite. And this is the value I can provide as a tester. Testing the design or prototypes on real realistic and complex use cases. This is something that usually a designer is not briefed about or doesn't have the knowledge about it because nobody told them. And we know about those cases. We should do that first. Second is uh, checking if layout or animal elements are logically placed. Is the page well structured and logical? Does it make sense? Of course, we should think about user experience. Remember those surprising pop-ups? I wouldn't do that again because it's breaking the experience for our clients. And of course, consistency is the king. If we have a CTA, on the footer, right side, we should always stick to this because people are used to it. People will expect and you will have a shorter learning curve. And we as testers should look for these kind of things. And the last but not the least, we saw the content is really important. Don't tell your clients they are invalids, for God's sake. And this is really also important to look at it as a tester. Or even better, is the tone of voice we see in the application actually relevant to the targeted audience? You, you wouldn't talk to your business customer if they are teen like they are teenagers, right? So, having that said, you can ask a couple of questions. Again, to start the conversations about it. Is the product easy to use? Is it too easy to use? Is it over complicated? Is it giving it some kind of useful feedback or not? 
are things self-explanatory? Or we should design something that is more uh, easy to understand and doesn't require any additional contact. And consistency, of course. Is it consistent with itself or with common, well-known products out there? It's not always just about the requirements we have. It's also about the out outer world. So, what I wanted you to remember after this talk is a couple of things, actually. What I wanted to explain here today, and I hope I succeeded a little bit, that asking questions is not a bad thing. And testers really like to ask questions. I really like to do that. It clears the air. It gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on. Asking for feedback to your own work, to your own designs and requirement specifications is, is a good thing because that means you, share, you care about your work. You care to improve. And deep down, I'm sure that you won't also make your clients happy, but you won't admit that, I know. I don't want to admit that. And I hope that you will remember and think about it, why not start test earlier? And by testing, I mean introducing some kind of critical thinking into your own work. It's a good thing, and you shouldn't be afraid of it. Having that said, I would like you to, as well, rate all of our talks, share feedbacks, and thank you for listening to me today.